So now, let us call up the second speaker for today, Agustin Speziale. Where are you? Oh, there you are, Agustin. He is speaking about the inherent benefits of implementing RPKI. And while Agustin gets ready, let me tell you that he is product manager at Siri. He's responsible for internet and the network managed services. Welcome, Agustin. Thank you very much. My intention is to speak about some of the additional benefits regarding already implemented RPKI. So let me give you a bit of history, because today we're referring to topics that were presented in the past. And like Carlo was saying, I'm working at Syrian. This is a company that has been in the market for less than two years. So this is the agenda. I'm going to give you a couple of background, introduction and background. This will be a couple of slides explaining the implementation of RPKI, then some current information of the prefixes of clients that are assigned, how we implement this, and how you're going to tell your customers that you're going to be doing filtering, then statistics of what occurred with some of the prefixes or kinds, some examples of the benefits implied by having RPKI already implemented, and hopefully, if there are any questions, I will be able to answer these. Now, the history I'll be telling you about is for Autonomous System 3356, and towards the end of this gray bubble, the RPKI appears. And Syrian began in 2022. So many of the things I will be telling you about has to do well with the Event 3, which is the original one of the Autonomous System 3356, there are some examples of some authorization letters that are with Autonomous System 3549. This is maintained in some cities, but this is already uh, uh, going out. So I wanted to describe the entire process without going into all the minute details of this slide. Now, let me tell you how we made the decision of starting with RPKI, because we were working with the Autonomous System 3356. I maintain the arrow down at the bottom with ASN 3356 and RPKI on the right. Back in 2014, an event like this, but in the United States, many operators, many network operators, realized that there were lackings in secure routing. So they were proposing a couple of solutions to problems such as these that we had. So the proposal of that solution was called the Routing Resilience Manifesto. As you can see, among the 12 organizations that defined this, we had Level 3, which was one of the major collaborators. So these best routing pro uh, um, practices were developed. We used to have this was then picked up by Manners and the Internet Society as best practices. And this is something that is also taken into account at LACNIC and LACNOG's event. And at LACNIC and LACNOG's event at that time, 2014 and 2015, at that time, we already listened to presentations on how to implement RPKI and how these issues were solved. So I came to the events, I listened to this, and then we asked the architect of our network, well, why aren't we implementing RPKI? At least at LACNIC, we're already speaking and about this and also in LACNOG. So there were doubts about this and what was this all about. So then we took advantage of the event that held in Buenos Aires of the IETF when the global network architects came and made all the decisions. He's Eric Osborne. At the time, he worked at level three. And we invited him in order to clear a couple of doubts. So we met with Carlos Martinez from LACNIC and the NTT architect, who also had a couple of queries. So we took the advantage of speaking with Jeff Haas, who was a chairman at the time of BGP at the IETF. So he introduced Eric to us, and Daniel is also in the photograph, and Jorge Brito. 
and he made a presentation in Rosario at a LACNOG meeting. So all this progress, we're doing fine with no haste, but gradually we continued working to see how we would implement this. But there was no plan, plan there was no action. It wasn't easy to say whether by such and such a date we'll have solved something regarding the autonomous, an autonomous system that has such a great impact. So all of a sudden, <coughs> the site behind me is BGP safe yet? We shared this in the global internet, so the autonomous system 3356 appeared as if it hadn't implemented our PKI, and this being one of, that had one of the greatest interconnections according to Kaida's ranking. So this placed even more pressure on us. This was back in April 2020, and this is important. And today, if you access that site, you'll see all the major autonomous systems, systems that starting implemented this and the dates and what each implemented. So this led us to have a good plan of action for the purpose of implementation and for executing this plan. Now, specifically regarding RPKI implementation in autonomous system 3356, basically what you have seen in the, at the beginning of this week on Monday, I listened to a couple of presentations. I saw that there were some slides that looked more or less like this one that I prepared because basically we did what we heard had to be done. And we took this to production. In other words, to have the repositories, oh, the certificates, the cache and the validator, and the routers. In this model, you have there with the clouds, you have the different RIRs, and the 3356 with the repositories. So we distribute these in the different regions because 3356 is in different regions globally. In the case of Latin America and the Caribbean, we had two servers in order to download and update things. And this is a component we used. We use the cache and the validator. We download these ROAs periodically using rsync. And this is an app that is connected through Secure Shell, and it just downloads the changes. You needn't download everything. And in some cases, our RDP. <coughs> The row of validation, in the last slide this will be explained, then the prefix list generation, and then the transfer to the routers. Now what tools were those that were used at the time, the one that showed part of the history when carrying out all this work and all this development? Well, these are the tools that you have here on this list. And in all cases, the slide has a link to those tool if you wish to, tools if you wish to download them. And whenever there's a reference, you have the link for downloading these. So these are the tools that were used when considering the deployment of, the R, of RPKI. Now, currently, many months later, these are in production only for Cloudflare, which, was the first, which is the first bullet, and NLNet Labs, which is the fourth or five bullet you have here on the screen. So with that, we are providing this RPKI solution, and it is operational. And the same over here. In the case of validations, to a large extent, what we saw during the week, if the ROA is valid, it goes through, and if it's not valid, it is blocked. And in also, those that are not signed are allowed to go through, but in ultimately, these will be filtering, but not in the short or medium term. Now, how do we mark this in the communities? 901, in the case of a valid prefix. 902, and it doesn't go through if it is an invalid prefix, and then the community 903, if this is an RPKI, RPKI unknown valid, these are allowed to go through. Now, how could you verify whether your blocks in the autonomous system 3356 are being labeled in one way or the other? This can be done with the root views, 
consulting through these communities or also entering the Looking Glass. If you enter lookingglass.org, the first on the list is Autonomous System 356. So if you access that Looking Glass and enter BGP, your block, and the relevant mask, then if you scroll down, you will see the community and how this was labeled. Now, when are we rejecting these when these are invalid? Well, if the subnet mask is inadequate or is not properly signed, then in those cases, we label these as invalid. And if the autonomous system where the announcement comes from is inappropriate. Now, how did we communicate this to our clients? Well, this was done in different ways. This was not directly. We s made announcement by email. We sent a document informing about what we're about to do, because ultimately we were going to filter some things. Now, prior to doing this filtering process, we dedicated, we had the RPKI working for a long time without filtering 902 and also notifying those that we saw were not properly signed. So it was, this was so as not to filter this straight away, but at least notify those involved. So we notified the clients, we organized a webinar, and the idea was to sh share with them what RPKI was all about. Not all clients participate in the technical events. Sometimes these are banks or other organizations that were not aware of this, but they then participated. We invited LACNIC. This was back in May 2021, and this coincided with other events that LACNIC was organizing so they could join us. We invited the Internet Society to give us uh, to whom we would explain why we're doing this, and this was not just one product that we were using for some reason that would not be justifiable. So Israel Rosas participated from the Internet Society, Daniel Tarrago, who was the network architecture, architect sorry, from inside of Latin America, Jorge Lam, who participates in LACNOG. As a LACNOC member, he explained how to sign the ROAS. We were very ambitious when we sent out the invitation, and we explained how to create ROAS. And we managed to organize that webinar with the clans, which really, to Israel, posed a lot of requirements in the sense of making the same presentation in Colombia or in other places where people had joined. Now, this is quite interesting. Now, what do you think happened afterwards after we made that presentation? We told the clients we started to do filtering. This was in May 2021. About 30 months later, what could have happened? Did they pay attention? Did they sign? Didn't they sign? Did they take this situation into account? Well, these are statistics that we took with Daniel Tarrago, who was there in the picture. This was on Tuesday when I was completing the numbers for the presentation. So the Syrian customer prefixes and RPKI. So those who, that are invalid haven't been measured because we should have added each of the routers that received this, and this was not going to be so simple. So those that are valid are the ones that we did count. And so, and then we have some unknown RPKIs, and they are allowed to go through. So signed, we have about 31,000 prefixes, and unsigned, we have about 45,000 customer prefixes. So we're still advancing and more awareness is required, but as that number of signed RPKIs starts to increase compared to the unsigned ones, well, decisions will then be made regarding the filters globally as to whether to allow the unsigned to go through or not. Now, let me speak about the benefits that this process brought about. This was a manual process and something that went beyond the fact of having implemented RPKI and all these reasons that I explained. So one of the benefits 
was that when we had a client that had services with us, and at a given moment, they started to grow or for whatever reason, and maybe the resource assignment in the past had been occurred differently compared to the current standards. So in those cases, it started to grow, and they picked up a link from a third party. If those resources belonged to Syrian, then they couldn't be announcing these by the backup provider. So these were the multi-home clients who really were involved in this kind of situation. Then we had cases that were not necessarily multi-home clients, but they had several clients who had IP resources, and they used us for their transit purposes. And there are some cases where necessarily other customers had their own resources, and these are given to our client in order for them to announce these. Now, an example of an IXP that was quite real. I had to put a nice picture of Buenos Aires. This was a printed document with level three and in two lines. We authorized Cavase We had asked Cavasset for the authorization, and we asked them to pick up the filters for a given autonomous sister that was announcing one of our prefixes. Another example is here with IPNet. This is a provider from Venezuela who had services with us. And as they started to grow, they had a third party and asked for authorization to inform about the prefixes with that third party. This was the case of a multi-homed client with announcements for backup links. In this case, these are all IPv4 addresses. This case over here is a client from Posadas in 2018. Here we have IPv6 addresses. This was a very long document who asked for authorization to announce these resources. And the last one, the last example, this is a client's client. So they used this provider to make the announcements. So as a final conclusion, the current situation is we have this manual administrative session. The ROAs are signed to validate instead of the documents. No long, documents are no longer signed. The, we have automatic filtering through the IRRs. Ours is internal, level three, and LACNIX and some other IRRs. We have RAD B. And more information on the IRRs, IRRs are here in that link. So hopefully this was helpful and useful. The idea was to share with you this experience and other benefits that this brought about so that we should not only think that this IPKI is only linked to security issues but involved other things. Yesterday I was listening to the discussion on the IPs when there was a question, a remote question on hijacking. So it brings other solutions, not just uh, administrative but also the uh, hijacking and uh, the BGP issues. So with that, I finished. Hello, Agustin, how long did it take you to deploy this. Well, start, uh, well, analyzing it took quite a long time. We had meetings with Carlos to try to solve it. So once Claufer publishes this site and it's an uh, IDP and we had this out of r the radar, then in April 2020, in May 2021, we were already saying it in less than a year, including uh, the tests and uh, less than a year. 
And what about the resources uh, uh, that you needed in uh, persons? Or yes, the team was global. For uh, there is a global architect for the network. We had uh, Rago uh, locally assisting us. Once architecture defined how it would be done, that's a planning area. Doug Midori Kentik. Uh, so my question is on one of your slides, you mentioned that the uh, procedure for marking uh, routes, you, you, route, you mark routes with a community uh, as far as the RPKI status. Um, so this is a, a, oh, I can step back. Is it mejor? Oh, okay. Yeah, I can get closer. Okay. Is it mejor? Okay. Um, so you're marking uh, announcements with a BGP community uh, based on the validity. Uh, so this is a practice. There aren't other. There aren't many other networks that are doing this. I, I don't know of anybody else. There is a perhaps remote uh, scenario where this could be problematic if three three five six were to suddenly not be able to uh, validate uh, if something went wrong uh, because of the size of the network. It would, it would require a re-announcement of many, many, announce, many, many routes uh, with a change of the community. And I think there's a design requirement where you want to have a system, if it were to fail, it would fail kind of transparently. In this case, it would cause, 3356 is a big network, and if it were to suddenly announce every route at the same time, it could cause potentially stability problems for the internet. Was that concern ever uh, raised? Yeah, un poco, sí. Sí. Okay, gracias. Yo tenía una. I had Pero one. Me, me están haciendo bullying aún. Well, they're, they're bullying me. Eh, yo te quería preguntar un I poco wanted to si ask you, Tim, whether you could tell us a bit, more or less, how, what's the range, the diversity of your equipment, and if you find any difference in the software or the machine's diversity that led you to have a plan B? I don't have a diversity. We, we applied two servers only for Latin America. There are two per region in the global uh, network for this, for the cache validators, for uh, uh, downloading and processing. And I assume that in the same, in the other cases, that those uh, that will be the plan or plan B. I was thinking of he was thinking of the routers, the network uh, machines, the routers, and that you've never had any problems. You've never had any issues that required your attention. Now. Well, you were there at the meeting. Do you remember that meeting? Yes, I remember the meeting, but I don't remember. I remember the fact. I even remember the picture that you showed. I remember that. And I think that, and as a matter of fact, now that you mention it, the way you approach the, to the topics is very interesting. First, communicating with the community. I remember with the DNS, you did the same. So congratulations for your good job. Thank you.